All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to call today's podcast is be careful of who you worship and who you look up to. So I think a lot of us grow up, or, or, or grew up, I should say, um, not knowing a lot about people that we thought that we loved or, um, and I'm basically, when I say this, let me clear, clarify what I'm saying as far as worship. I'm not talking about religious figures here. I'm more or less talking about maybe icons. It could be people you grew up loving. Uh, it could be all different sorts of people in business. It could be athletes. It could be actors. It could be public figures of some sort, politicians that you looked up to and you thought they were a certain type of person. It could be a religious figure. Um, but I'm not saying when I say worship, I'm talking about different gods here. I'm talking about people for the most part. Um, so the one thing I learned at a very young age is how full of shit people are. And I say the quicker you hit the streets to a certain degree, as someone being younger or teaching the youth, the better off you're going to be. Because, God, I wanted to do a podcast on a title I came up with. I think it's called quicker you realize everyone's full of shit, the better off you are. I'm actually going to put that in my notes. I'll try to remember that. And that doesn't mean everybody's full of shit. But I'm here to tell you a majority of people are full of shit at one time or another in their life. And it doesn't mean they're bad people. Okay? I'd say almost everyone at a certain point in time does certain things that they regret or maybe still may be doing things or they live different lives or... They act differently around different people. Now, again, that doesn't mean they're bad because I think for the most people, all of us act different depending, obviously, in the surroundings we're in. If you're in Vegas, you're not going to act like you're in church. It's that simple. And uh, you're not going to act a certain way around your family than you would your close friends. You're not even going to talk the same way. And for people to say, um, you know, you're phony or fake, that's not what I'm getting to here. I will talk about, though, something now that I grew up loving Walter Payton, Dick Buck, is because I was obsessed with football. I also loved films. My mother loved movies and television like Johnny Carson, you know, like everyone else, Paul Newman and certain actors. Same with my father. He loved Bruce Lee, my dad, Steve McQueen, and other famous actors, Clint Eastwood. And I think a lot of us grow up idolizing certain people, and then we almost emulate them. We don't even realize it. A lot of times I remember seeing uh, Paul Newman when I was younger in Slapshot, for instance, and my dad actually cut his hair, but um, he used to cut his hair in Chicago. I saw him in Slapshot at a very young age. I don't know how old I was, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't remember in the 70s sometime, I'm pretty sure. And I remember seeing that and saying, well, I could see me being that guy. And it's the way he talked and act. And I remember also the first movie I ever went to was the Lenny Bruce story. I'm not sure if that was the name of the movie with Dustin Hoffman. That was the first, which I know may be very inappropriate to take. My father took me to that movie. I think he thought I'd fall asleep, but I didn't fall asleep through the entire thing. But I think I liked the way he talked. And I didn't even know at that point in time what a movie was. I was just literally standing in the chair because I was so little and watching this film in front of me. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Is this really happening in front of me? I didn't know. You know, I must have been three, four years old. But as time went on, like I said, I loved athletes. And then I even went on to love athletes like uh, Franco Colombo and um, other athletes that were bodybuilders. I don't need, you know, even Dorian Yates and, you know, all these Lee Haney and uh, Rich Kaspari and mainly the 80s guys, I guess you could say, and 90s. And, um, I wanted to get huge like them, big, strong. And at times you don't realize how naive you are sometimes looking up to certain people and it's not a dig on them, but a lot of them guys did a lot of things, uh, that I, I didn't know they would do. Maybe they could make, take certain supplements they may have or not have taken steroids. I think a lot of us know the answers to a lot of these questions and, I was on the fence regarding should I do steroids or not. I ended up never taking steroids just because I was deathly afraid of needles. And then I didn't trust any pills. One of the reasons why was because I knew guys that would um, <clears throat> go back and forth to Mexico or sold steroids. And some of the shit was knockoff. They would, 
It was just a scam to a certain degree. I mean, some stuff was legit, some wasn't. It's my body. I don't trust anybody. So I never got on steroids, so I thought I would get massive. And I had what I called reverse anorexia. I wanted to especially get as big as, like, say, Dorian Yates. I wanted to get around 300, but I would be happy with 260. I got pretty close. I got to 247-ish. Natural. I almost had a heart attack and died, though. Don't kid yourself. Um, but th- my point with that is I kind of worshipped a lot of these guys. I wanted to get big and strong. One is I didn't know what they were going through to get that big and strong. And then as time went on, I learned just by, you know, knowing other people. And I think what happens to a lot of other people too, uh, or us growing up, is we want to emulate. And it could be if it's smoking. If you want to be a rock star, maybe thinking drugs are okay, which, you know, you may want to experiment. Uh, actors, um, maybe doing certain, you, you know, you think they're a certain type of person and they're not. You're only kind of looking at a performance, I call that, because you don't know these people. Some are great, some are not. And, you know, this not only goes for looking at people from a distance, like stars, or just like I was talking about, you know, you know, international, you know, mega people that are just known worldwide. I think sometimes we gravitate towards people that we know even personally a lot of times or want to be like that aren't that good of people. And sometimes <clears throat> you figure that out the hard way. And you have to be very aware. Because the one thing in my podcast, at least for now, is I've been trying to help people more than anything, even though I don't believe most people are going to listen and take my advice. But if they take a little bit from it or just think or second guess a lot of th- or just think about things that I'm saying because you may confront this but I always talk about people that are going to fuck you over most likely are the ones closest to you obviously you probably know that strangers don't have a shot at you because you don't have anything to do with them but most likely uh, you're going to get screwed over and if you're a female listening to my podcast which would be kind of cool not sure how many female uh, fans I have or people that listen um be very aware of men and women around you, uh, especially if you're younger or if you're a mother, a grandmother, an aunt. Please teach the young to be very aware. That's one thing my mother always installed in me, and I still go around and say, yeah, whatever, whatever. And I have two daughters now in their 20s. And you have to teach your kids to protect themselves because no one, for the most part, can do that for them except themselves. You are not with your kids 24 hours a day. And as they get older, it gets harder to control them because they won't experiment. But even younger, all it takes is a bad few hours or a bad half an hour and something can happen to them. And again, teach your kids, again, when you're studying other people or you see who they start to like or love. And it could be a pop band, it could be a boy band or whatever. Those are kind of harmless, I think. But if you see them gravitating towards certain celebrity uh, type, you know, people or whatever you want to call them. It could be, again, musicians, actors, uh, reality stars and all this. Make sure they know that, for one, what they're watching is not usually factual, even if it's a reality show. A lot of people still think if it's a reality show or think it's a reality show, it's real. Most of that is scripted and edited. It's reviewed before and after it's it's a pitch it's a plot you know it's a, it's i'm not going to say it's a scam there is some reality in there because it, a lot of it is off the cuff but i can assure you all, most of it is fake and it is set up and i don't even need to get into all that shit but i back to being careful who you worship just you individually i think a lot of times we don't realize um all the good around us and we don't actually take advantage of I'm not saying worship, but really taking advice from good people because I can speak a lot about that myself. My mother was very Christian orientated or Catholic. And then my father, like uh, I mentioned, we were in a nightclub or maybe I didn't in the bar atmosphere. And I used to think when I was younger, you know, you're sitting there and you're, you know, all these people are talking at least Christian wise scripture, scripture, learn this scripture, live in the book, you know, all the Bible and Jesus, this, you know, everything is driven by religion, which burnt me out. 
I got to the point. I'm still kind of like that. If you preach to me, if you're like a hardcore, if somebody telling me about scriptures or whatever, and I just ran into this in, was I in Jersey or New York? It was actually, I think, California. What the hell am I talking about? Well, that week, I think I was in Sacramento. I take that back. And I was in a bar, actually, and then there was a dude there. He looked older, and then a girl came in. There were young girls there, and I was like, what the hell is this all about? And then I think they were shopping. He was there with his daughters and a group of girls. And he just kept talking about the good book and scriptures. You better do, you know, in religion, he just kept telling her and every question she had. And it was religious-driven. God bless them. But after a while, I just, I just turn it off, and I just... To me, it just, I almost want to say, listen, shut the fuck up. Do you have any of your own opinions? Do you have any of your own, you know, every decision you make, is it truly through a Bible, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But I just, it just turns me off. I think a lot of people's identity just gets so wrapped up in certain religion or politics or anything. It, they almost lose their, which is fine. They can do that. It just didn't work for me. So while I was growing up, I wanted to almost, after a while, go anti-religion, not saying atheist, but just like, I, I can't take it. And I think my mother working for the archdiocese and then me going to Bible camps, going to a Catholic high school, being around a lot of priests. I think like anyone else, you hear these funny stories about uh, the, the pastor's son or daughter flipping out and actually going the opposite. And I think that was kind of, and I don't think my mom necessarily meant for that to happen, but thank God she did do what she did. And on the flip side with my father, being in the nightclub bar business, by the time I was 20, I was entirely exhausted from that lifestyle. I felt like a veteran. Like most people start partying, say, when you're 18 or 20 and they go to 30 or 40. I wasn't necessarily partying, but I was in the nightclub business from like, or bar, gentleman's club, whatever you want to call it, from 2 to 40. But by the time I remember turning 21, it's almost 20 years, I, on the other side too, was exhausted from loud music, bands, partying, alcohol, drugs, drunks. So I found myself kind of exhausted from really both sides of something that was two of the biggest parts of my life. And I was kind of trying to figure myself out there. I think that's one of the reasons I ran and made movies because I wanted to escape my my real surroundings and go into uh, and play make-believe to a certain degree and just get away from it. It was just a nice break where I had also a controlled environment because it was kind of with my mother, very religious, which is fine, still is. My father's the complete opposite, which is fine as well. I kind of, now that I'm older, I can accept both of them being complete opposites before you're kind of always kind of torn in the middle. But nonetheless, I also started then getting in the film industry, reading a all my favorite directors. And I already knew a lot about acting and directors and all that. And I moved to San Diego and started to spend a lot of time in LA and then started to see a lot of people for who they were. Good and bad. People sit around and always bum rap LA and say a lot of the people in Hollywood or in the entertainment business are all phonies and fake. And this, I found a qu truthfully quite the opposite. Most of the people I met were very humble, especially if they were successful you realize that it is so hard for them not only to not only to get where they got to, but also to sustain that in a city in a town like that that just eats you up and just it's you're disposable almost to a certain degree. So when I left there and came back to Florida, then um, I finally was able to just sit back and say, you know, and look at all the people over the years that kind of that I liked and worshipped to a certain degree or just followed. And instead of bashing them or saying, wow, I can't believe this person's like this or that person ended up like this, because now with social media, we learn so much more about these people, good and bad. But instead of always looking at the bad, I looked at all the good I learned from everybody. And everybody who you kind of, I think, really like um, or you know, idolize to a certain degree. We don't like to sometimes say we idolize certain people, but we do. They made us who we are. Right, A lot of us also do certain things because of who we kind of worshipped. That could be even, like I said, physically I liked, if it was Walter Payton or Dick Buckus, and then bodybuilders, you know, that helped me physically. I may have hurt myself at different times getting too heavy and lifting too heavy of weights, but that's on me. That's not on anybody else. But 
you know, a lot of people wanted to, you know, they love movies. They wanted to act. A lot of people love music. They end up musicians. A lot of people love business. So they ended up starting a business and so on. So on the flip side, um, basically what I'm saying in this podcast, I'm not going to make it super long, is one is be aware of who you worship, but also understand there was a reason why you worship them. Because something internally um, attracted you to that person or those people or what they were doing. And I think, too, a lot of us go to do certain things um, and then we kind of fail and then we freak out. <laughs> so anyways, and then we look back and go, how did I, well, how did this happen? Um, I'm not as, I'm not as, uh, if you have somebody you've always looked up to and you didn't become as successful as them, or you didn't accomplish what they accomplished, or you didn't end up looking like them, or you didn't end up producing like they produced, or whatever the case may be, do not beat yourself up. You're not that person. That That is just, you're going to, I believe, a lot of times go through all these different chapters in your life, and who you like now, you know, I love bodybuilding. Let's just say, I'll just use that for example, say in the 90s, and I don't, I haven't looked at a magazine or watched a bodybuilding show forever. I love making movies. I made movies. I'm going to see the Joker tonight, but I don't really, all I did for 20 years was talk about, uh, write scripts or try to produce, write, you know, make movies. I don't do that. I kind of evolved into something else. That doesn't mean I won't go back, but just take notice on who you kind of worship is basically what I'm saying and be very aware and realize you're going to like some people, I think, eventually or look up to them and eventually you're not. You're going to move on to other people. That doesn't mean that you're selling out or that you don't care about the person before or um, you're just jumping ship or whatever the case may be. All right. I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, but yeah, please pay attention. To, please teach your kids to be careful who they worship or envy and all those type of things because they can easily get wrapped up following the wrong people not only in your their lives personally like i said before but also a lot of parents don't realize they're worshiping you know certain type of celebrities with now with social media that are doing a lot of shitty things that they think are cool they don't realize the effect it could have on their life okay so just be aware of that all right um, I've been putting up some YouTube videos a lot on fitness i actually did one recently on headaches so if you get headaches I used to get these really bad headaches going in and out of dark bars with my father or even his bar. It would go from very dark to very bright. And I started to get these headaches that I couldn't I couldn't take anymore. And I just started to get so much stress in between my eyebrow area, right above my nose. So I, st I started to learn how to massage that. And then I started to massage my eyebrows. But if you have really bad headaches, especially in the front of your head, you may want to check that video out. It was a game changer for me. I'm telling you. Just by uh, massaging my eyebrows a certain way in my temple and in between my eyebrows was just unbelievable. It may not happen immediately, but in like a week or so, it, it was just a game changer. I stopped having headaches and it was just incredible. I also been giving advice on different things regarding fitness, mainly lately, different gyms. I haven't been doing restaurants as much and different workouts. So um, you might want to check that out as well. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. All right, take care and uh, safe travels.